Gotcha. Hey, welcome back to the Glycogen Cycling Channel. Back with Glades Race number two. And if you haven't seen race number one, make sure to go check that out. It's at the top right corner. Go watch that and then come back to this because this is going to be a whole series, probably like six or seven videos. It's not really going to make sense if you haven't seen it from the beginning. So go check that out and then come back. So let's take a break here and let's just show you the course and what we're dealing with today. So here's what the course looked like today. So we start out in Moorhaven like the last race and we headed west. And instead of making a left turn here, we continued on this road and went out for a longer loop. So today was a 70 mile race and last race was 45. And then we continued on, made our way back. And then all the clips and where I started recording is probably right around here today. So I recorded from there all the way to the finish. One thing to note about this course here is we had wind from this direction. So in the clips you're gonna see, we had a tailwind for most of it, but towards the end of this race, and really the last like five miles or so, the, the wind really came into a play. And I'm gonna talk about that more towards the end of this video. So my sole objective in this race was to watch just the GC guys. So I finished fifth in the first race. I knew I wanted to place well in the GC after that, and I knew I could. So I really wanted to watch the guy who was in first, which is this guy named uh, Brendan. And he was really the strongest guy. You can see him right now on the right-hand side of the road. And essentially, I just wanted to be his shadow. So if he moved up in the field, I would move up. If he moved back, I would move back. And I just had my eyes dead set on him all race. He did not leave my sight. So, you know, occasionally. Occasionally I was in front of him when he was behind me. But for the most part, I would always know where he was. Uh, and anytime he would try to go on a break, I would be there. And actually right before this clip, we were actually in the best break of the day. We were probably out front for about an hour. And honestly, I thought that was the winning move. Uh, he started it with like two other guys. I ended up bridging up and brought probably five guys with me. And uh, we ended up having like a group of like 10 to 12 or so. The problem was we had a best buddies rider and best buddies was dead set on this coming down to a field sprint. I think they're kind of just like practicing and um, you know, getting their, their lead out train dialed in for the season. And they ended up pulling everything back. So, you know, at this point, there's a few riders going off the front, but nothing really amounted to anything. It was really the move I was in with Deska and uh, Justin Boldy was in there, Amino Rip guy, um, and then a few others. That was really the most uh, risky move of the day for, for the field. Uh, so that was, it was a good move that I was in. Unfortunately, it didn't pave out, but um, that's what it is. So now at this point, we're kind of just heading back. We have a tailwind at this point. You can see 32 miles an hour is our speed. And, you know, at this point, I'm, I'm not super fresh, obviously. After being in a break and rotating for about an hour, you know, I, I probably did like three... 20 330 330 watts for an hour in the middle of this i think the average power for this whole race which was two and a half hours was like 275 so that breakaway i, de I definitely was going for it. i wanted that to be the winning move because there was a couple of the other gc guys that got caught out and i knew this deska guy isn't a super strong sprinter, but I know I know he can hold power for a long time. He's a big TT guy, so you know from from a smaller group, I think I definitely have the edge on out sprinting him. Uh, so that's kind of what I was hoping for, but unfortunately it all came back together. You can see uh, Michael Hernandez up there leading the field at this point, and really at this point it was kind of just like just move in for the field sprint. 
Um, <clears throat> and again, just try to finish ahead of this Deska, Deska guy, and you can see him right there on the left. He actually, early on in the race, ended up breaking his saddle. Um, I don't know what happened, but like one of the rails on his saddle snapped somehow. So something happened there. So he definitely wasn't 100% of his, on his bike, but uh, <clears throat> that's what happened. You can see him trying to make a move here. His sole goal is to get out in front. And you can see me kind of just like biding my time. I know Hernandez was marking Amino Rip. So if, if Amino Rip is going, then there's gonna be a best buddies guy that's gonna go. So I wanted to just kind of limit the amount of work I had to do which is why I didn't immediately jump on that small move that he made. Um, and at this point, we have the intro clip of the day, which was probably the most sketchy point of the race. Um, could have turned out a lot worse, but here we end up coming up to this intersection. The police are supposed to stop traffic here. And for the most part, they've been doing a good job, uh, but this truck ends up deciding to go <laughs> and you can hear me yelling, you know, let's stop, basically. Uh, but the truck ended up stopping, tried to reverse, but, you know, there was enough space for all of us to move through. So we kind of just neutralized the race for a second um, and then started it up again. So let's skip forward to the end and show you kind of what happened towards the end. Nothing really, you know, there's a few attacks that went at this point, but nothing ended up sticking. So let's fast forward and show you the end of this race. So as I was skipping through, I, I realized there was this, another move here that I, I actually had to do a lot of work for. Um, so you see Deska right in front of me and right in front of him is Michael Hernandez. And <clears throat> like I mentioned before, Deska's move is he needs to get in a breakaway, and that's that's his one card that he has. And if you know that, then you know he's going to go all in when when he has the opportunity. So I always wanted to keep him like on a tight leash. And Hernandez en ends up flicking his elbow at me, uh, <laughs> and I was hoping someone else would come through and help, but end up having to do some work and you can see me looking around a little bit like is anyone going to help me out here um and i didn't want to risk giving him too much space because he's a type of rider that can just ride away from the field and just hold 350 360 370 for a long time until the end because at this point we probably have 10 miles left so you know, less less than 30 minutes. And, and it, at this point, I'm like, okay, he's back. He's looking back. I'm looking around. And then I kind of just sit up. And at this point, uh, you know, I'm pretty sure we got him. I mean, it's not, not too difficult. Um, and then he kind of just keeps on pedaling. <laughs> um, you can see it just started digging right there as he had got a little bit extra space. Um, and then we had this other rider that jumped up with him. So now this is kind of a threatening move. And I'm really hoping someone would, you know, jump through and help me here. And luckily, this best buddies rider uh, knew that this had to be shut down. And then a few other guys jump and then a few other guys. So at this point, I'm like, OK, I, I have some help. I just need to fall back a little bit because I didn't want to just completely empty the tank here. Um, so yeah, and everyone ends up making moves, getting up to that uh, break because they realized it was uh, kind of threatening. And, um, you know, it, it all ends up coming back together. But that was just something that, that happened that when you're going for GC, sometimes you just have to make those efforts in the middle of the race uh, when you might not necessarily want to, just to keep everything together, keep everyone on a tight leash and uh, yeah, luckily it all came back together and I didn't have to use a ton of energy, but it was a move, you know, a match that I didn't want to use at that point. Uh, <clears throat> but again, that's what we got to do sometimes. So at this point, let's skip forward. And here's really where all the action happens. And remember how I was mentioning before about the wind 
and how that's coming into play at the end. Well, this is where it really took effect. So the wind right now is coming from our left side. So everyone who's on the right side towards the grass, that's where the biggest uh, benefit is. Um, so you can see Sebastian right now in the amino rip on the right hand side. He probably has the best draft out of anyone in these first 10 riders. Uh, he's on the right hand side of the road. The wind's coming from the left. He's got a couple riders in front of him. He's got the best position as far as uh, energy saving. And you can see he's like barely pedaling at this point. Uh, where, whereas I'm doing, you know, I just had a clip above 400. Um, so I'm trying to get my position handled, um, but I also don't want to be boxed in. You can see <laughs> Justin has to go in the grass here to hold his position. He's really being the sweeper for Sebastian in front of him, who's their sprinter. And then you have Amino Rip with their four guys all uh, setting up their, their lead out train. Um, so at this point, I'm just trying to get a good position because right now I'm just, there's just so much wind coming from my my left side that it's hard to, um, you know, you don't, you don't want to use that much energy basically. Um, now the downside of being on the right hand side is you got to hope that there's space that opens up so you can go because you're kind of at the mercy of everyone on the left hand side of you. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, as we are finishing the last like two miles here again, there's one guy out front, which is Deska, the guy that I'm supposed to be watching, but I know it's kind of like, that was just like a Hail Mary move because I knew best buddies was going to start, start, you know, digging deep. And as soon as they do that. Like everything's coming back together for sure. I mean, they have four guys there that are just ready to go full gas to the finish. So I knew Deska's strong, but he's not that strong where he's going to be able to pull that off. Um, and so very shortly he ends up getting pulled back. So <clears throat> again, now I've moved a little bit too far back. I had riders trying to pass me. So anytime there's an option for me to move up, I want to do that. And you know, this guy is a tiny draft, but it was uh, better than nothing to say the least. Um, and you can see Deska's out there. I end up getting a little bit too far out in front at this point, um, but I kind of want to just like slot back in. So you can see me kind of move to the right a little bit. Um, <clears throat> And at this point, I'm just kind of drafting this guy on my left. So, you know, even though there's not someone directly in front of me, the wind's coming from the left. So as long as there's someone on my left, I'm getting a good, good draft. And at this point, I know I'm right where I need to be. Uh, the best buddy sprinter is right here with the blue shorts. So this is a good spot. Um, and then we have Sebastian right here. So I'm, I'm feeling good at this point. I'm like, okay, I've got a good position. Deska just got pulled back, so he's moving to the back of the field, and he just blew his load, so you know he's not gonna be able to finish well. Um, so I'm feeling good about where I'm, where I'm at at this point. Um, so now it's really just got, you gotta hold your position, which is really the hardest part. <laughs> uh, you know, because everyone wants to be where, everyone wants to have a good position, so. When that happens, you know, you're getting pushed back and you can see guys trying to move up in the grass <laughs> occasionally. Um, and yeah, again, just following all the wheels I can. I had to, you know, look at this effort I'm doing, like 600 plus watts, 650 at one point, uh, just trying to move back up <clears throat> for this final sprint, which I believe we're like 300 meters to the finish right now and at this point i should have gone on that best buddy's wheel that was my mistake i should have held that tight pushed the bastion off um and gone and you can see this guy in the grass jumping <laughs> and at this point it's it's full gas trying to get to the line as fast as possible and you know i kind of just i should have been on that best buddy's wheel and i was just a little bit too far back um 
And at this point, I'm trying to wheel throw for third, and I just miss it. So, <laughs> unfortunately, did not get on the podium, but I finished, ended up finishing fourth in this race. Um, and yeah, it, that was a really exciting finish, and it was good. Good to blow the cobwebs off the legs early in the season. This race was back in January, so it was definitely a good start. Um, and yeah, I ended up taking fourth and moving up to second overall, which was what I wanted to do. I was aiming for the GC. So Deska ended up finishing eighth, so I brought back some points on him. He's still in the lead, but I'm right behind him in second. So. End up being a good day on the bike, and that was the Glades race number two. So thanks everyone for watching, and I will see you next week for race number three.